The push to bring the Olympics to Boston has not exactly been smooth sailing. So this week, the group behind the effort, Boston 2024, is launching a new campaign. They've taken out full-page ads in both the Globe and the Herald, in which they list the 10 principles which form the basis of the city's bid. Among them were promises to use the Olympics as a means to improve public transportation and affordable housing development, create jobs, and to protect the city and state from financial risk. Number 10 on the list of criteria that must be met was that a majority of people support the bid. And that's exactly what my next two guests hope to provide. Place for voters to weigh in, maybe even have the final say. Joining me are Boston City Councilor Josh Zakim and Evan Falchuk. Evan is head of the United Independent Party. Good to see you both, gentlemen. What would your question do? I know it's not drafted yet, Evan Felchuk. Mm -hmm. What would your, what's the basic premise behind your question? Ours, because it's a statewide initiative, has to be written like a law, and it would say the taxpayer money couldn't be used for the Olympics. That's fundamentally what Boston 2024 has said for a long time. How about so transportation infrastructure, which they've said it would be used for if it's in the pipeline, so to yep, speak? Yep, we're going to carve out an exception for that. Uh, but fundamentally, Boston 2024 said they're not going to use taxpayer money, no guarantees. We want to make sure that's on the ballot. And with this, this is a binding law, should it pass, be approved by the voters? That's right. And what's the deal with you, Josh? We have four questions right. uh, that you're proposing, correct? We have them. We'll show them to people as you speak. Go ahead. Sure. So the first question is, should or should not Boston host the 2024 Olympics? If the answer is yes, should public money be used to support the bid? And beyond that, should the city make any financial guarantees to come, cover cost overruns of the bid? or the Olympic operations, mm -hmm. and then finally, should the city use its power of eminent domain to take land for the games? These would be non-binding, correct? Correct. And, and unlike Evan Falchuk's question, where if he collects the signatures, whether the legislature likes it or not, and the attorney general says it's constitutionally permissible, it's on the ballot, right. you need the signature of the mayor, right. who apparently is unsure whether he likes ballot campaigns vis-a-vis -vis the Olympics well, for this to make it to the ballot, Well, correct? we first need a majority in the city council and then the mayor's signature like any other uh, law. Where are, th where are things in the city? Who on the city council could oppose this and why? Why? They're against the public having a voice in this thing? Well, at this point, we're trying to get a, a hearing uh, on this bill, which we filed uh, now coming on almost two months ago. Um, there's a special committee uh, to review the 2024 Olympics at the council. The bill's in the committee, and we are hoping to work with uh, Council President Linehan, who chairs that committee, to finally schedule a hearing for this bill and then ultimately a vote on the council. Is that floor. polite talk to suggest the city council president doesn't support this, so there's never going to be a hearing? Is that what you're trying um, to say? You know, I, I can't speak for him. I've certainly been pushing and we've been hearing from a lot of folks across the city that they want this hearing, they want us to vote on this, and they want to be able to ultimately vote on the Olympics. You've probably seen the polls out there at home. But let's just put them up for you. WBUR Mass Inc. poll the last three months. Three months ago, 51 support. February in the middle of the snow, 44 percent support. March, after a lot of those salaries and fees came out, dropped to 36 percent. Evan, I've had this conversation with you before. You seem to be drafting a question that is exactly what, forget these ads, which confirm what the Boston 2024 people say. Transportation money, it's in the pipeline, yes. No other taxpayer dollars. So have you talked to them? Have you approached them about signing on to this thing, sponsoring it? I, I look forward to it based on some of their public comments to ask them for their signatures Why haven't you on this. What, what's going on? Why haven't you said no? We haven't, we haven't spoken. They haven't called me and I haven't reached out to them. We've been busy on our own efforts to draft good language, make sure this gets in front of voters. It really is what I hear from people across the state is they feel completely left out of a process run by insiders where they worry that people are going to make a lot of money using taxpayer guarantees. That's what voters need to have their voice heard on. Have you spoken to the Boston 2024 people? They Some of them testified in front of the city we, council, We had right? a hearing. I've asked them on more than one occasion if we can sit down and talk about the uh, their bid and this proposal. And, and what I'm happened? still waiting for the, the promised call uh, to set that up. You know, I, I asked Doug Rubin, one of their press people or spokespeople, was here about a week, two weeks ago maybe, and I asked him if they would support a ballot question. And uh, conceptually, you know, the notion of no taxpayer money is fine, but I guess binding it is something that they're not quite uh, there for. Uh, but the, the governor said in the last 24 hours, and I think before, he'll sign your question, meaning to put it on the ballot, but he is unclear as to whether or not he'd actually vote for it. Is that where you understand this thing? That's what I read, too. Um, this is, we, there is a vacuum in leadership happening in our state right now around this issue in particular. We should it's, say you ran for governor, for those who don't recall. This is, I remember it well. I was there. <laughs> and th there's, there really isn't anyone saying, let's hold them to their promises, number one, about not using taxpayer uh -huh. money, but also saying, what's the vision of Massachusetts look like for the next 10 years? Because there's a private group that says it ought to be about preparing for these games. Taxpayers have a different view on that. You know, I understand your thing is non-binding, Josh Zakin. What happens when people vote yes on your questions? Should they vote yes? Yeah, yeah we want it, taxpayer money, fine, and they vote no statewide on his. What, what happens then? 
Well, I think first we have to make sure both these questions are on the ballot. And I think having a final, a sort of an end to this discussion, so to speak, to say the, the message is out there. People have learned about the bid. They've learned what it entails. And they're going to weigh in, yes or no. I think that's, that's the goal here, to make sure that everyone, for in my case, in the city of Boston or in Evans across the state, uh, has, has a role in this and has a voice. What's your case as to why the voters outside of Boston should even have a say? If Marty Walsh says there are going to be some guarantee in that list of 10 items said no financial risk, I don't know what that means, right. whether it's insurance policy or something. If Boston complies with what is usually the International Olympic Committee's mandate that you do a guarantee, yeah. uh, he says, that won't put taxpayers at risk. Why do we need a statewide vote? Well, two things. First of all, what they've proposed does not just occur inside of Boston. It's in many other places across Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and it seems to be expanding. Second, the, bu the budget of the city of Boston is about $2.7 billion. They've proposed about a $14.5 billion games. If there's going to be a guarantee, Boston can't possibly absorb that without the Commonwealth of Massachusetts backing it. So $14 the, billion dollars counting the five, give or take, that's sure. already so allegedly only, on the transportation front, and the rest, they say, is going to be privately raised or from sa uh, television revenue, sale of tickets, right. that sort of thing. W given the reality that the typical cost overrun is 252%, Let's say we're talking about a 15 to 20 billion dollar games. The city of Boston can't possibly guarantee that without the Commonwealth of Massachusetts being on the hook as well. Now, you, you both have said, in these statements I've seen and having conversations with you, that you're either agnostic about this. Or where, where are you on the Olympics in general coming to Boston? Both of you, starting with you, Josh. Um, you know, I think I'm still where I am a few months ago because a lot of these questions haven't been answered about how it's going to be paid for, who's going to be on the hook. For me, the financial questions are the biggest ones. Beyond that, we get into the logistical issues of where these games are going to be set and the impacts on our neighborhoods. How about you, Evan Felcher? Well, the Olympics are a cool sporting event, so that part of it I like, but I like our democracy a lot more. And right now that's getting trampled uh, by this effort by Boston 2024 to set the agenda of what our state looks like and not having the consent of the voters. So, are you against the game? Are you, is it fair to say you're against bringing the games I, here? I I'm, mean, you've, you had an event in Northampton last week yeah. with probably the highest profile critic of the whole thing, Andrew yeah. Zimelis, that economist from Smith. You were partnering with him on that thing. So isn't yeah. it fair to say you oppose it's, this? It's, it's fair to say that the structure they have right now, the whole economic model of the Olympics is we're going to make money using taxpayer guarantees. That should not be allowed in our state. It certainly shouldn't be allowed without the chance for voters to vote on it. So the Olympics as a sport are great to watch, but it's a business. And that's really what the issue is at stake here. A business that's going to make money off of taxpayers. That's what we can't have. That's what the referendum is about. Okay. And so to get back where we started, since we believe in cooperative ventures here, you're ready to meet with Boston 2024 people to see if they could sign on to your effort and you as well, right? Sure. Did you hear that, Boston 2024? Yeah. They're ready. Both sides here, well, state and city, are ready to meet. How do people find you if they want more information, whether they like what you're doing or not, sure. Josh? Uh, JoshZakum.com or email me, Josh at JoshZakum.com. And Evan, how do people find out about your question? Well, if they go to UnitedIndependent.org, we've got a whole mm. section on the Olympics. People are signing up all the time to, to help us when the time comes to collect signatures to support this movement to have a vote. We call it the People's Vote Olympics Committee. We'd be happy to host the meeting here between you and the Olympics people. Next time we'll propose it. Josh Zakum, thank you so much. Great to see you. Evan Falsic, appreciate your time.